Let's get it. Bitch! Yo, no, come in, everybody! Come in, come in! Yeah! Alright, y'all already know it's Zen, Bronx from New York. You feel me? Uh, Mass Faces, Artist Profile, 9 degree weather. You know how we get it. My bitch Stella, you feel me? I can't see, but it's a dog, my dog. <laughs> uh, I go by the name of Zen. I'm a rapper. Uh, I do all sorts of arts. I'm a full-time artist, so I go from fashion to videography. And you know, I've been doing YouTube for since eighth grade, you know, when YouTube almost first started. So, um, you know, and now it's like, being a rapper was just me combining it all. And it kind of just, you know, I do my own videos. And, you know, I've been in a hardcore band for as long as I know, you feel me? Uh, uh, my the band I'm in right now is Otterborn. I play drums for that band. You feel me? We's killing shit. Uh, we haven't even dropped a body of work, but we're probably one of the most anticipated bands from the underground scene. Uh, but we soon to come out. We've been a little, you know, quiet. Um, other than that, to get back to the rap, you know, uh, yeah, I've been always tangent, playing around with rap and playing around with beats and writing to it. You know, I had certain friends tell me like, yo, bro, like you sound you sound good. Like I, I like this or whatever. Like I would listen to this. And you know, I never really had fucked with the songs that I wrote and or my nor my voice or energy until, you know, probably like a year ago is when I made that first song called Infinite Sun. I wrote it and I actually liked it. Like I actually could listen to it. And I fucked with it and I was like, I you feel me? Ran with it. And now I'm here doing rap. Does the hardcore scene influence my music? I think it definitely has a heavy influence in my music. Why? Because I was what brought me into music was playing drums and was playing was playing for bands and I was playing local shows for literally like since I was 14. I'm 22 now. So uh, you know, I've always had, I've always been way more involved with the hardcore music. And as far as hip hop, everybody in my band fucked with rap. We all grew up with rap. We all grew up in the Bronx, you know, being as I learned as it is. Yeah, we didn't pick up rap first. But, you know, like I said, I was always playing around with it. And, you know, um, I definitely seen the hardcore influence come with it. Um, and I think that's just, that's really what brought me in. Once I started hearing the heavy bass drops on those tracks, XXX and Bones and all these niggas who first came out with it, that's when I was like, it called me. I was like, yo, I think they're, they're calling me. I gotta go. Like, that's it. I can violate that. And now I'm here violating shit. You're, being from the Bronx is not your everyday thing to have, you know, people who had to color your hair and, you know, wearing tight jeans and, you know, all the hardcore, you know, shit, like, all the things that's basically, you know, main fashion now, you know, I used to be doing by myself, and that, I used to, you know, like, that wasn't your usual thing, now I see half my hood trying to dress like me, and they calling me fresh, and it's just like, I, I always say that I didn't grow on to rap, rap, rap grew on to me, like hip hop, music, all this fashion. I'm not trendy, the trend grew on me. <laughs> Yo, my writing process is very simple, and this is my number one advice to any artist. Um, basically, I write a song, I mean, if I li I'll listen to a beat, beat browse, whether it be on YouTube or Beat Speak or sending me on my email. And I'll listen to it, if I fuck with it, and it sounds right, I'll start you know, saying whatever I'm mumbling already, like certain patterns, maybe certain words, certain nouns that I want to rhyme with, and then I'll start building the words and stuff like that from there. And basically, you know, the main part of my writing process is when I'm done writing, even if it was just a verse amount, I'll literally listen to it, I'll get smacked first, I'll listen to it, and if, it, if I can cringe at like, the, the energy, the presence of my voice, if I can cringe at something, or, or I literally, Ask myself in an honest way, like a self-assessment, like, would I listen to this? It's not, I would really bump? Nah. And then I'll just go back in, and I'll literally get the recipe, the master recipe. And that's it. That's how my writing process goes. <laughs> As a full-time artist, listen here, guys. Number one fucking word to make a living in this life is hustle. It's hustle. And, I mean, if you're not going to take college or even... Go to the extent of not having a job at least to do music, you should 
be doing music just as hard as you're in college. You're just as busy with it. You should be just as motivated and hungry and stressed out about it. If that's like that's really where you have to take this, because you know I'm at a point where literally like I don't go a week without playing a show. Not I don't play for practice like serious shows. But I you know I, I I'm I'm getting busy. You know and it's just that's how it became a full time thing and just grew by you know. Uh, you know, you just come to that point. You, just need, you, you know, you don't want to waste any time here. And, uh, yeah. So my main, my main advice to people would definitely be uh, to stay on your hustle and you know, stay focused. Go every day just as hard on your, you know, arts than you would in college or job, especially not to do anything. Now, uh, you know, I always tell people like I'm not trying to influence and say yeah, I got the way. I'm really decided to, it took me to this extent because, you know, like, I can't fake interest. I, I can't go and try to stand at a job and do my 9 to 5 knowing for it. At these times, it's literally people that I'm, I'm involved with that are doing things as I'm speaking. And I can easily be getting myself more plugged in on what's going on and instead of, you know, trying to you know, be scared of taking the full jump, the full leap, and the full risk, and balance both. It's balance is always needed, but I can trust my work ethic at this point. I think that's what let it get at this point. I don't need that much money to get to have my pocket to make it to a show and kill it and be, you know, get an interview the next day. It takes very little money to do what I'm doing right now, and that's not the way most people want to go. But uh, if you believe in yourself, which you have to believe in yourself. You can do it. Stay fucking busy. Kill that shit. You know? Don't have bad spending habits. That's all it takes. Okay, well, other than the fact that drugs are one of the ways that I'm able to make money, just, just blood and psychedelics. Not saying I say sells and girls and stuff, but, but, you know, these are things that, you know, people in the hood obviously know. Like, yo, you need some pocket money. You do your thing over there with that. But I've never taken, you know, any serious, any serious drugs. Like, other than psychedelics and blood, like the only shit that I've tried once is cocaine, uh, ecstasy. I don't fuck with Zans, never tried Zan, never tried Perk, never tried Molly, I can suck my dick with all that shit. I really, I, I, I don't take any type of substance that's not gonna enrich my life. Like if, if it's not gonna show me something that's worthwhile. If I'm there, especially if it's there to just get me fucked up or super hyper, which I took coke and I literally sat through my whole experience. It's like, it's just not worth it to take all that, you know, come back to nothing. At least like it does, you can be like, like, fuck, like, this is like the, the manifestation of everything. With these titties, like, I gotta eat better. Oh, you gotta, you can, like, wake up to yourself, you feel me? So, that's what I'm saying. I don't fuck with drugs, fuck drugs. It has very little influence on me. Psychedelics are the shit, though. I think that's a birthright. If shrooms just grows in the earth, it's a birthright. To eat that shit. She's not here for no reason. Let's get it. Stacks. <laughs> um, funny thing that you asked that. Fun family um, does play a big influence in my life, in a sense, in a very weird kind of way, because I really didn't grow up with much of a big family. More like nine. 90% of my family is literally, 99% of my family is in DR. And, you know, so I just literally have my, well, it used to be my mom, my big brother, my twin brother, my grandma. My mom passed away when I was literally just 13. I was a freshman in high school. She passed away from colon cancer. And, you know, being that she was a single mom, like growing up with a single mom, I was a, a mama's boy. So I was straight, like a good kid. And so when straight when she died, it was just like, like, I had such a profound relationship with her and she was so much to me that it was so easy for me to naturally gain like a guilty conscience to still raise myself and still take myself to a parent teacher's conference. Still, you know, do things like that. Like, you, know, you wouldn't really see a kid doing it. So, not having a family has definitely influenced me a lot, you know? And, it's, and for that, I say family still has influence. My grandma is like my heart right now. You know, she's the only person here that I have. You feel me? And uh, that, all that keeps me going. All of it keeps me going. You feel me? And I know I don't haven't even seen my dad's face. I've never seen how he looks. Like legit. Like I don't even know who his name, what his name is, or anything like that. So 
Um, and I don't care to. I feel like if I ever meant to do it, I'm not gonna be like that. Like I can't say that. The fuck are you doing, boy? But uh, yeah, man, family is life. If anything, what I say all the time is, love is law, and business is family. Because you must love. You must love everybody. You know, but family of people who who care for you, who are gonna make sure you you're, you're good tomorrow. In a sense, the only way that can happen is it facilitates somewhat of a business. Not to sound like logical about it, but that's, that's the practical word, the sense of the word. Uh, you feel know I me? Mean? That's I have a big family. If we talk about it in that context, all my friends I have like a handful of friends that are really I can definitely say family. And so I've always had great relationships, fam. You feel know I me? Mean? Let's get it. I just recently had a performance at V Files. They recently dropped. A whole arc on me. You guys are pretty much gonna read what I'm telling you guys right now in this interview. Uh, shout outs for him to putting it on video, so let's get it. But uh, yeah, so do I have anything to look forward to? I do have a couple of features that are going to be insane, not features that you guys do not know about. If you are following me and you're watching this video, then you're probably gonna be aware about the people that I'm, I'm involved with and you probably have no idea what the fuck is hitting you. But I'm telling you, it's the people, it's the nicest people right now in the NYC underground. I'll tell y'all that right now. So, new music, uh, a new music video for the summer and I will say that after that music video drops, I'll be working on a tape. So, I do not, I'm not gonna drop a tape until another video is up. So, that's what you guys can be seeing from me. I have a show on June 26th um, it's my first headline show. This is the first time I'm announcing it. So basically, um, a couple of other people are performing. Out. I shouldn't be announcing it, but by the time this video is out, it should be, you know, all out and said. Leaders of guys on that shit. That's that's the Brody and my son Brian Too Real. That's the fucking Brody. He's playing uh, a lot of sick people. A lot of sick people. It's gonna be literally a rage show. So it's gonna be crazy. You guys know me, y'all know how my fucking friends get, we go crazy. We're like the fucking jackass of the Bronx. <laughs> Yo, it's Betty, she wanna be in the video. All right, guys, so I'm gonna leave you guys off. What's that thing about? Zen your mind, you feel me? Zen your mind shit. Okay, so, this quote that goes, when you are asleep, you are in a world of your own. But when you are awake, you wake up in one common world. So, if you're awake and you're aware of reality and you're aware of whatever is going on, and that's it, you can see things for what it is. When you see somebody else that can see things for what it is and not in an illusionary state, you guys are in one common world. You guys can, are in any other state, any other word about anything else, then you feel me? Niggas just sleep. All the only other thing I can say is that you will attract your own energy. If you are around assholes, I mean, if you're an asshole, you're going to be around assholes. If you're trying to make money and get rich and successful, you're going to be around people who are trying to get rich and successful. So this is how life works. And just make sure that you keep yourself, you keep yourself on check before you try to check anybody else. Hell yeah, dude, that went so well. <laughs> Thanks, bro.